Hi everyone, Alan here, Our History, Your Story. Today, we're, as part of our local world history series, we're going to explore the history of Uphall and Broxburn. So let's begin. The first settlement that would go on to become Uphall and Broxburn was known as Strabrock, and I believe this ended up being Strathbrook. Now, what's a settlement without a castle? The Strathbrook Castle was built in the 12th century, and uh, this settlement and area would go on to become Uphall. That's right, Uphall got there first. In 1350, the estates of Strathbrook were split in half. Where the castle was and the settlement around it was given to Marriott. And the other sister, Marjorie, she was given the estate on the eastern boundary. And this became Easterton. Easterton, I hear you say. Where's Broxburn? We've got up on the game. Where's Broxburn? Well, Easterton uh, in the 16th, 16th century became Broxburn. And the name Broxburn is believed to mean Brox meaning brook and burn meaning boundary. Uh, although I have heard it, heard it said that Brox is an old Scots word for badger and burn meaning stream. Who knows? Maybe it's both. As mentioned, the area was first called Strathbrook and there was Strathbrook Castle. Now sadly, nothing remains of Strathbrook Castle uh, and it was believed to, it's believed to have been demolished in the 19th century. However, its demise was probably a lot further back than that and during the 17th century, it's believed that the victims of plague were laid to rest in the castle cellars. At this point in the story, we have Broxburn and we have Strathbrook. Now, where does the name Uphall come from? Well, Uphall came into usage in 1560, and the reason it's got, uh, called Uphall is because it was, there was an orchard that was associated with St. Nicholas, attached to St. Nicholas, and that's where the town gets its name, Uphall. In 1642, the areas of Broxburn and Uphall were, re, were reunited under Ludovic Stuart, and he became the Baron of Strathbrook. So there's that Strathbrook name again. Um, and essentially, this area was mostly sort of farming communities, and apart from the Inaluda War, it was quite a quiet place. This all changed with the construction of the Union Canal, which was built between 1818 and 1822. The biggest change to the area came with the advent of shale. So vast was the shale's impact on Broxburn and Uphall that the whole place was known as Shale-tropolis. Now, what is shale? Well, essentially, there's minerals and rock, shale rock. They smash up the rock, they heat it up, and you can extract the shale oil from that. The first shale oil was actually produced here in Broxburn. Can you believe it? I know. And the Broxburn oil works, shale oil works, was actually the biggest in the country. Now, other products could be made from shale, and these could include sort of shale oil, paraffin, sulfuric acid, and they also made candles. Works in both Uphall and Broxburn. Extensive housing was required for the thousands of workers that worked within the industry. Uh, now, most of these houses were destroyed in the 60s and 70s. However, where I am just now, the new Holygate, uh, these are good examples of miners' rows that were used during the time. The shale oil industry came to an end with imports from America to begin with and then imports from the Middle East subsequently after that. Broxburn Oil Works closed in 1927 and Uphall, Uphall Oil Works closed in 1936. The byproducts of the shale process or the shale manufacturing can be seen littered throughout the local landscape and these are referred to as bings and there's one just here. Now essentially they mounted them up, left them there. Now over the years they've developed their own ecology and their own ecosystems and their species here in the bings that can't be found anywhere else in the world. So now that I've given you a bit of an overview uh, about the history of Broxburn and Uphall, I'm going to concentrate on some specific buildings, namely Nedry Castle, Middleton Hall and Houston House. Here I am at Middleton Hall. Middleton Hall was built in 1710 and it was constructed by George Barclay and it was meant to be built, or it was built as, a grand mansion. I should state that George Barclay moved from Strathbrook Castle, which I mentioned earlier, 
and he moved here to the mansion. And it was short-lived because in 1714, the Earls of Buchan took over. Now, they made extensive reservations, uh, renovations throughout the year, so little of the original structure still remains. Middleton Hall has had many uses throughout the years, as apart, for, apart from a palatial residence, you know. I wouldn't mind kicking back here, back in the day, I'll tell you that. So the many uses it's had over the years, it was used as a mental health facility um, by Edinburgh Lunacy Board. It was also used as a rehabilitation centre for injured soldiers during the First World War. It was used uh, as offices for a lot of the shale companies in the local area. Uh, and in 1987, it became a nursing home and it has remained a nursing home right throughout to the present day. Houston House was constructed in 1551 and it was um, built by Matthew Hamilton but eventually it found itself in the hands of the Sharp family uh, and they bought it in 1569. It stayed in the hands of the Sharp family for a long time and actually 13 members of the family owned it throughout the years and this took us right up to 1945. After this, uh, in 1968, I believe, it became a hotel, and it's remained a hotel ever since. And if you stay here, you're in good company, because it's also believed that Mary, Queen of Scots, stayed here too. So as mentioned earlier, nothing really remains of Strathbrook Castle. Although it's been speculated, rumours, rumoured, hypothesised, that these two gatepost uh, decorations, they would go at the top of the gateposts, uh, are all that remains, although it's not really, the design isn't really of the time of Strathbrook Castle, so it's probably unlikely, although it might have been. Nidri Castle, which lies just over there, was built in the 15th century by Lord Seaton. Now he died in the Battle of Flodden. May the Queen of Scots even stayed here on the 3rd of May, 1568. Later Nidri Castle passed into the hands of the Hopton family, and when they moved out of the castle into Hopeton House in the 1700s, um, the castle was allowed to fall into a ruinous state. Now, as you look over, you'll notice it's not in a ruinous state, and that's because it was renovated and it made a private, private residence in the 1990s. Before I go, I'd like to thank Trisha and the staff here at Squirrel Collection Nursery. All the best moving forward, and a big thank you for serving the local community for the last 17 years. Uh, my little boy absolutely loved it here, so all the best Trisha and all the best to the staff at Squirrel Collection Nursery. This has been our History Your Story, I've been Alan, and this has been the History of Uphall and Broxburn. Please remember to like and subscribe, join us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and I will see you next time.